of all your confinement and say, I've got to press into the presence of God. I don't know about you, I'm so excited that God brought me out of sin. Anybody glad for the blood tonight? Anybody glad for the Holy Ghost tonight? Anybody been changed in this house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song to the Lord as we get ready to transition the service. But I want every worshiper to stand where you are. Right where you are, I want you to begin to talk to Jesus. If you've been changed tonight and delivered by the blood of the Lamb, I want you to glorify Him with everything that you've got. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I've been changed. I've been changed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He, he if that's you, come on, lift your hands. Free. If this is your testimony, you found joy tonight. I found joy. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. Oh, hallelujah, grace. grace. Open your mouth and say it. And say the Come on, say, I've been changed. I've been changed. Just like that. Come on. All the way down to the back, lift your hands and say it. Free. All over on this side, come on. Deliver. Lift your voice and say, I found joy. I found joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In favor. In favor. Lift your hand one more time and say, I. I've been changed. Thank you, Jesus. I've been healed. healed. Say I've been free. Free. I've been delivered. Delivered. Say I found joy. I found joy. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. I found grace tonight. Grace. Thank you, Lord, in favor. Say in right favor. now. Say right now. Right now. Right now is the today. moment. Today is the I've day. been changed. I've been changed. Say, I've been changed. I've been changed. I've waited. I have waited for this moment to come. I'm not going to let it pass. I won't let it pass. Thank you, Jesus. Say all. 
and tell him I've been through some things but the blood of Jesus brought me out I want you to look at him and tell him God delivered me from some stuff and because he delivered me I've got a made up mind that I'm never going back if you really mean that tonight I wish you would lift your hands and just begin to shout I'm not going back I'm not going back to that sickness I'm not going back to that pain I'm not going back to that depression I'm not going back to that prison I'm never going back never going back right now 61 years help we give God praise give God praise he's worthy could you be seated a moment we're glad for everyone that is with us in this service tonight it was great last night it was great today it's going to be wonderful as we move forward this evening and tomorrow and tomorrow night. We are thankful for our leadership. And I want tonight before the choir from Jacksonville sings, Church of Pentecost, Brother Rick Olson. I want to recognize our First Lady, Sister Williams, would you stand? <laughs> Step back down so you can see him because he's hiding. Brother C. Patton Williams, our district superintendent, could you give him... Let's hear it. Church of Pentecost, let's worship with them. Just 
Shit! 
living water. If you missed it, you owe it to yourself to get those messages. Tonight is an honor to bring Brother Limonis. More than 40 years ago, around 1971, my family and I were on our way back to the mission field of Argentina. My father stopped through, I was about nine years old, to preach a national convention in Santo Domingo, Ecuador. Sponsors are here, missionaries at one time were there as the missionaries in Ecuador. We were there visiting the battles missionaries and brother and sister Daniel Scott. At that convention, my brother had a book of Acts experience. He fell asleep in church and fell off the bleachers and we almost had to take him to the doctor. But I got to meet two dynamic, incredible young men at that conference, the Limonis brothers. From there, God brought them to this great country. They pastor two great churches, Brother Elias Limonis in the Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area, had the privilege of being with them there. His ministry and impact stretches throughout that whole area through Dada Works and through many conferences around the world called Times of Refreshing. He's blessed our Florida district before. You know God's going to speak through him. Would you just make welcome Brother Limonis to this great audience at the campground of Florida. Hallelujah. Let's do it for Jesus one more time. Let's do it with everything that we have in our hearts. He is worthy of all of our praises. If you got the rivers of living waters flowing inside of you, come on, praise him. This is a can meeting. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's so good to be here again back in Florida, the camp meeting. I think I was here about three, four years ago. And I was just reminiscing in my mind. It was, it was, I was flying from San Francisco this morning. In fact, really early this morning. I got up at 3.30 this morning. And uh, uh, then I had to go to, to the airport, uh, park my car, and go through the whole process, and I took off at 6 o'clock in the morning, and uh, so it's been a long day for me, so uh, you're going to excuse me if I don't look too well here, in fact, a little sleepy or something, but uh, it's been a long, long day, but anyway, I was reminiscing, uh, it, we had such a great time last time I was here, and I appreciate uh, Brother Pat Williams, the district superintendent, inviting me back in the district board. Brother Welch and Brother, I see so many elders here that I do uh, respect greatly. Brother Welch being one of those elders. I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, it's so good to see him here tonight. Brother Wolf, we traveled a little bit together to some Latin countries many, many years ago. Had a great time with Brother Wolf. And so I give honor to him, the district board here. This is a great district. I mean, this is a, it's an unbelievable district. I believe it's a secret weapon in the United Pentecostal Church. Uh, uh, such a unity, great spirit, and I do appreciate the invitation to be a part of this great, great camp meeting. I know brother, uh, <clears throat> oh my God, my brother preached last night, brother, brother Easter, I am sorry, brother Easter, I saw him just a minute, what is he? There he is, come on brother Easter, I'm sorry. So good to see you, it's been a while. I met him many years ago in Virginia, and I know he's a tremendous evangelist, tremendous blessing to, to our church, to our fellowship, and it's good to be with him, Brother Mar Hodabak. What a pleasure just to uh, spend a little time with him talking, and he makes me feel all here tonight. And I'm not that old. I'm not that young, but I'm kind of medium, you know. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit maybe four or five years older than he is, but, uh, well, you know, we just start doing the thing, uh, whatever we had to do for the kingdom of God. Thanks. Good to see Brother Harabo here today. Why don't we go to the reading of the word with uh, no further delay. Once again, thank you. It's a great honor for me to be here today. I 
don't take these things lightly so I prayed I had a message that I thought God wanted me to preach tonight the first night the well, second night of the camp the first night for me uh, but and then uh, and then he would switch you know the, that's how the Lord works sometimes you get prepared and then he switch on you so that's what he did but uh, I'm going to read from the book of Judges, uh, Judges chapter 12 book of Judges chapter 12 and I see so, so many friends uh, in the audience here today uh, Judges chapter 12 verse 5 I mean you have it all right, and the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites, and it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, let me go over, the men of Gilead said unto him, and thou art an Ephraimite? And if he said nay, then said they unto him, say now Shivalet, and he said Sivolet. I want you to notice the difference. Shivolet with the age and then Sivolet without the age. For he could not frame the, to pronounce it right. Then they took him, slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites 40 and 2,000. 40 and 2,000 die that day. That is a big, big number. That's a, that's a lot of people. That's what the Bible says, 40 and 2,000. So I want to take this text today. I want to uh, just speak to you for a few moments under the subject, Shivalet, the language of the Spirit. Shivalet is the language of the Spirit. Amen. Can you pray with me and ask God to touch us, all of us, and uh, let's prepare our hearts and minds. Let's raise up our voice one more time before we are seated. Lift up your hands and say, Jesus, touch us all. Touch the preacher. God, I pray right now, touch my mind. Put thoughts in it. Touch my mouth, put words in it. God, let your anointing flow in this place. Through my body, through my mind, through my spirit, oh God. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. So this divine seed of yours, God, can, can bring forth a hundredfold. Jesus in all the glory and all the honor is exclusively for you tonight. Why don't we clap our hands and give him praise before we are seated with all of our hearts, with all our minds and spirit. Oh, Jesus, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated. You all look wonderful here tonight. Great crowd, great spirit, great worship in this place today. Listed among the most difficult things to learn according to the expert is to learn to speak another language besides your native language. Now, I can agree to that. How many agree to that here? If you try to learn another language besides the, your native language, you know you ran into some problems. I believe the Spanish language is the easiest language to learn. How many agree with that here? ¿Cuántos están de acuerdo con eso? I thought so. Asian languages being the most difficult language to learn. Now, the reason why it's so difficult to learn, maybe there are some others, but one of the reasons is because uh, the tongue is a muscle and it gets accustomed to pronounce the sounds of vocals and also consonants with, this, with certain sounds. And that is very, very difficult to relearn to pronounce the same letters with different sounds. And, and like I said before, I relate to that. I really do. And I don't know, I don't know if you ever thought how God designed the human head. God designed a human head with seven openings. We had two eyes, we got two ears, we got two nostrils, and we have one mouth. And I'm extremely happy with my two eyes, don't you? I, I think I can survive with one, but I'd rather have two. I'm happy with my two nostrils because uh, it makes it easier, the inhaling and exhaling of oxygen. I, I, I guess I could survive with one, but I'd rather have two. And I thank God for my two ears because it makes me 
uh, hear it better and also gives me good equilibrium. If it, I have wine, maybe, uh, you know, we'll survive or maybe we don't have a, a good stability in our body. So I'd rather have two ears. But I don't know. I don't know about you, but I never heard anyone complain because God only gave him one mouth. In fact, for some, one is too much. <laughs> because that one mouth has caused us so many problems. And if a God chooses to close one of those openings, God, let not be the eyes or the ears or the nostrils. Let them be the mouth. Like I say, the mouth has got us into big, big messes. Sometimes we speak and then we think when we have to think first and then speak. But sometimes we let those words go and we cannot retrieve words. Once they go out, they go out. It causes the purpose whether it's good or bad. And you cannot retrieve those words. So that's why it's so important for us before we open our mouth to think. Can you say amen to that? The Bible is full with the scriptures related to the mouth, to the tongue, to our words, the kind of words that we speak. The Lord said in Matthew 20, 12 and 37, for by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. That's why I believe strongly, and that's going to be the base of my message here tonight. It's not, it's not a great revelation. It's not something perhaps that you never heard before. I just want to reemphasize certain things that are so important. If we want to live at the fullness of the Spirit of God, I want to reach the purpose of God, the whole purpose of God for my life. And I'm going to tell you, the words that I speak play a big part on this thing. Can you say it, amen? Amen. And, and the Lord says, you know, you're going to be justified. You're going to be condemned. And I'm not just talking about speaking when I, when I say speaking the language of the Spirit. I'm not just only talking about speaking with another tongue as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. We need to do that every single day. If you're a Pentecostal, apostolic, born-again believer that you believe the Word of God, you need to speak with tongues every day. Well, you get up in the morning, pray in tongues, worship in tongues. You renew your mind away. You need to do that every day, every single day. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord on that? But not, I'm not only talking about that language, but also you need to speak the language of the Spirit, which is a language of faith. A language of purity, a language that edifies, a language that lifts somebody up. When somebody is down, God can use you with your words to lift them up. I'm talking about the language of faith. I'm talking the language that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. There are too many Pentecostals, apostolic, talking defeat today talking failure today. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 34 and 11 says, What a man is he that desired life and love and love many days that he might see good. Keep your tongue from speaking evil and his lips from speaking guile. How many of you would like to get up in the morning and have a good day? That's the secret right there. The key to have a good day is to keep your tongue from speaking evil. In other words, you better watch your conversations. When you go to work, when you go to school, amongst your peers, you better watch your conversations. You better abstain yourself from criticizing. We are good to criticize people. We are good to speak against others. <laughs> you better abstain from speaking derogatory words about to your spouse inclusively. To your children. You need to abstain from complaining and murmuring. 
That's what kept the people of Israel going round and round for 40 years because they could never, ever get in their mind. We come out of Egypt, and Egypt seems like it never came out of them. And they kept speaking in a new land, the whole language. And if you, if we are in a new dimension now. We are in a different land, the land of the Spirit. We need to start speaking the language of the Spirit, which is the language of faith, the language of victory, the language I can do all things. We're going to have revival. Our church is going to go. I'm going to serve the Lord. My children are going to serve the Lord. My marriage is going to make it in Jesus' name. I know the devil is coming against us. I know the world is against us. But a greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. I'm going to make it in Jesus' name. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to be lift up. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to shout hallelujah. I'm going to speak the language of blessings. I bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak the language of revival in the midst of all the things going on in our world today, in our society today. All the attacks, for the, all the things that are coming against what we believe, the principles of the word of God. It doesn't make any difference. Those things don't change the word. I'm going to speak the word of the language of revival right now. In this time, in this age, our churches are going to grow. We're going to move forward. We're going to keep moving forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to keep growing in Jesus' name. God is going to add every day those that are going to be saved. Hallelujah. The language of the Spirit. You know when you go to the doctor, especially years back now, they don't use the procedure anymore. But I remember when I was a kid and we go to see the doctor, he welcomes you to the to the room there. He'll You'll sit down and he start asking you questions. Where does it hurt you? What's it bothering you? And you try to tell him, well, this, that, you know, he kind of explain to the doctor what's going on. And after he asks you, you kind of explain to him all of these things, he asks you, stick your tongue out. Remember that? And you know, the doctor, the doctor know more about your physical condition by the condition of your tongue than what you ever were able to let him know about yourself. And sometimes we go to the Lord in prayer in the morning and we start talking to him and saying these and asking for these and help me Lord and bless me Lord and, and I want you to open this door and I want you to close that door and God and, and the Lord just stops for a minute and says, hey, stick your tongue out. Let, let, let me see what you've been talking about amongst your family, amongst your friends, amongst your spirit. I want to know what kind of language you've been using. Are you been speaking the language of faith? Are you been speaking the language of holiness and purpose and victory and glory? Have you, what kind of language you've been, stick your tongue out tonight and let's see what's going on inside because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The Lord knows more about us, about the condition of our tongues. <laughs> I guess that's why the Lord chose when you are baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm, I'm going to do something that nobody else can do. You can tame big animals. You can, you can with a little, uh, just a rudder, you can, you can guide big, huge ships. You can do all kinds of things. But you've got a little member that you cannot control. You, you, you can send uh, satellites into the air. You can do great things, but you cannot control that little thing inside your mouth called tongue. So what I'm going to do is when you get filled with the power of the Spirit, when I come into your life and take residence inside of you, I'm going to... I'm going to give you something that nobody else can. I'm going to do something that nobody else can. I'm going to give you a new language and you're going to speak with another tongue. It's not something that you know, not something that you heard, not something that you learned. I'm going to give you a tongue you don't have no control over. It. So I speak in tongues tonight. I speak it, I speak it, I speak it. Because that's a sign that the, whole, the Holy Spirit of God is controlling your life.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In, in our text tonight, let me let me move on into this, the, the message tonight. I just, uh, I'm just trying to get situated here. <laughs> in our text tonight, in Judges chapter 12, it is an amazing story. The scripture said that they were at the passages of Jordan. Now, the passages of Jordan is just a, the shallow portions of the river where you can go across very, very easily. In, in, in you know, the, the Jordan for us today, it means it represents transition. He said, why don't you help me preach here? Say transition. That's what it represents, Jordan. Transition. It's, it's moving from one place to another place. It was, uh, it was moving from the wilderness to the land that flows with milk and honey. It's moving from one life to a better life. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's moving from lack to abundance. That's what, it's a point of transition. That's what it means. Remember when prophet Elijah was about to, to get promoted from this world to a better place? Him and Elisha crossed over the other side of the Jordan. It was a promotion. It was a transition. The Lord Jesus Christ had to go through the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist before he began his, his public ministry. It was a point of transition. That's what the Jordan represents to us. And I believe we as the church of the living God, we find ourselves at the point of transition. Perhaps you came to this camp and you find yourself in, in, in a situation that you either go up or you're going to go down. I'd rather go out with Jesus Christ. I, I, I'd rather go all the way with the Lord. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go down. I want to move forward and I'm going to go on. It's up to you what you're going to do in this camp. Are you going to set their idol or you're going to say, uh-uh, I'm going to the other side. I'm going across. I'm, I, whatever I had to do, I'm going to do, but I'm not going home the way that I came. I got to go home different. For somebody here, you find yourself in a point of transition. You are about to make a choice. You are about to make a decision. You came here looking for direction. God is speak to me and speak through somebody. God show me what I need to do. Some of you find yourself at the point where one bad mood and it can set you back years in your life. That's why it's so important to connect with the Spirit and say, Jesus, speak to me. The Spirit, speak to me. I need direction. I need to know what I want to do, oh Lord. Jordan represents the point of transition. And the Bible said the Gileadites were fighting against the Ephraimites and the Ephraimites were defeated and they tried to sneak across the Jordan River. And so what the Gideonites did was they set up a guard, some kind of immigration points, and, and to, check, to check their passport, to check their, their, their credentials, to check their, uh, their green card, to check if they were legal or you know what. It says, you're going to come across? You're trying to sneak? You can't. You got to have a passport to go to the other side into the land of the spirit, into the land that flows with milk and honey, into the land of abundance, into the land where God is going to do great things for your life, into the land where God's going to do great things in your family, into the land that God's going to do great things in our churches, into the land that God's going to do great things in our city. I believe God's going to do great things, but you're going to have to decide here tonight, am I going to stay here or I'm going to go across? But for me to go across, I need to learn to speak the language of the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You, and he says, you know, the only thing, if you guys want to come to the other side, all you got to say is one word. That's all. Shivalet. That's all. And if you can say shivalet, and then you're going to be welcome to this 
territory where God is going to bless you abundantly because if you can't and then you cannot come across to this other side now for whatever reason they could not say shivalet for whatever strange reason now me my, my, myself uh, uh, being a Spanish speaking person for us to for example it, it, when, when somebody comes from Latin America and uh, they, they go to the store and they want to drink something. They want to spray. They cannot say spray at first. It takes a lot of practice. They say spray. Yes. Because for whatever reason, it takes a lot of practice with spray. But at first it's spray. So, you know, it takes practice. It takes, you know, you got to say it time and time again, over and over and over. For whatever reason, maybe perhaps because the way the, way, the, the, way the language sounds in certain vocals or, or whatever reason. In the case of the Ephraimites, they could not say the word shivalet. Maybe they had all kinds of hang-ups. Maybe they grew up in a home where their parents never gave them words of affirmation. Maybe they told them they, they're never going to amount to be anything in life. You're never going to reach your goals. You're going to be a loser the rest of your life. You're going to be just like a, such a such a person. And they never gave those people a words of affirmation and say son, daughter, God's going to bless you if you stay with the Lord, if you stay faithful in church, if you stay filled with the Holy Ghost, God will lift you up to places you've never been before because God is a good guy. You can reach your goals. You, you, you can go wherever you want to go as long as you don't let go the apostolic doctrine as long as you don't let go God I don't know what kind of language they grew up learned, but they were their, their language was a language of defeat they could not say shivalet their mindset their mentality they just couldn't think about anything greater they were happy living in the little place with a little place with a little church in the little little building in the little 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 And I want to say to everyone here today, God is a great God. His name is Jesus. He is a good God. He loves us all. He, that's why he placed his spirit in us. We got his name in us. May God's got good things for you in store. I can see revival everywhere. I can see church growth everywhere. I can see blessings everywhere. I can see our people going higher in the spirit and the blessings. In the name of Jesus, you can do it. You can be better than the others. The, the, God wants to bless us with great revival in these last days. We're not going to talk the language of defeat. I'm tired of negative people. I'm tired of those that think of all oh, the church. What's going to happen to the church? The, the, the church is always and he always will be fine healthy. Today the church is stronger than ever before. But don't you see what's going on? I don't want to know what's going on. I just want to know one thing. It is that my God is able to do more abundantly than what we can think or we can ask. That's the kind of God we serve. I'm tired of the negative, negative talk. What's going to happen? What, not, nothing that's going to happen. We're moving forward like never before. Hallelujah. My Jesus. This Ephraimites, I don't know. I mean, they grew up just talking the language that poor me. I don't think we can make it. I don't think, you know, the way we, I don't know, but they just couldn't pronounce the word chivalet. And so because of that, they got stuck on the side of the land. They were stuck in the same situation. Don't you tire living with the same problems, having the same situations? Some, some Pentecostals, and I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I just, let me be honest here today. I pastor a church, a pretty good sized church, and I know what I'm talking about. There's people that come to my office with the same problems every week. Let's get over that problem. Let's bring a new one at least. 
But the same problems, the same marriage problems, the same family problems, the same this problems, the same that problem. And we come and we go through the, the vicious cycle round and round and we want to go across and we can because we don't want to change the, our mindset, the way we think. We come to the house of God and instead of opening our mouth to praise and worship the Lord, we are all sad and depressed watching everybody praise. But I just stand in there and then you want the pastor to come forward and pray for you and, 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 and do something great for you but you don't want to participate tonight we're going to go to the other side you got to get involved you got to change the way you think and the way you, go, the way you talk you got to begin to speak the language of the spirit hallelujah Hallelujah. I want to come across. I don't want to be a stuck. I want to move forward. Hallelujah. My dad, he preached, he pastored, he did great things. And then he's already been promoted to be in the presence of God uh, four months ago. Now it's my turn. I want to get a little bit farther. And God, I want to do it. I want to go higher. I want to push forward. I don't want to hear those negative, pessimistic people saying, no, we can do it. Everything is expensive. I don't think the church, yes, we can. The church can, you can. We all of us take. Our God is a great God. Our God is a great God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Haraba went to the Bay Area where he, he started to evangelize. And he preached for us in 1987. I don't know if he remember that. 1987, we just starting the church that I pastor today. We had a handful of people, maybe 40 or 50 people in 1987. In that tiny little building. And nobody gave us a chance. I have pastors that came and told me, you're never going to do anything. You're never going to. I, mean, I have pastors that came and instead of coming and saying, hey, we, we with you. I'm coming here to pray with you. Listen, if somebody is so negative that they think God cannot accomplish something through you, kind of pluck your ears and says, I don't want to hear that language. I only have ears for one kind of language. And that's the language of faith. And that's the language of the spirit. I don't want to hear nothing that we can. Now, I, I, say goodbye to those naysayers. We, we're going to have revival. We're going to prosper. My children are going to be saved. My girls are going to be saved. My kids are going to be saved. They're going to marry in church. They're going to have children in God. My family is going to be successful. And my family is going to receive the blessings of the Lord. I don't accept nothing less except the touch of God in our lives. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise. <laughs> Say Shivalet. And the Bible says, there you go. That was pretty good. You're learning now. But, uh, but, but in the text, these people, those Ephraimites, the Gileanites asking, okay, you want to go to the other side? This is your passport. You, 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 this is your passport tonight if you want to go to the other side. <laughs> it's a point of transition for some of you. Maybe you came here down. Maybe I'm preaching to a pastor, a whole missionary that you've been, you've been going after with everything you got and you haven't seen the results that you want to see. I ask you not to give up. I don't want you to talk any kind of defeat. Maybe you preach for one, two years and you only got three, four souls to show for. It doesn't make any difference. You can praise him. You can pray and you can evangelize him. You can lift in the name of Jesus. Don't be negative. Don't be talking about any other pastor. Don't be accepting any members from any other church. Church, you just start evangelizing, you start praying, you start seeking the face of God. You tell those four people you got in your church, we might be we're small, but we're going to speak the language of the Spirit. This is just the beginning. God's got great thing for, things for us. We're not going to accept nothing but growth and revival and blessings and purity and holiness. We got the message. We got the true message. Hallelujah. Glory. Ah, but Brother Lemonis, you don't know why we lost our house. Well, that's all right. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be. Joel knew how to speak the language of the Spirit. 
some of us dwell on those things that we lost and all the recession and, and all of these things that we went through, financial breakups and all that stuff. Come on, get out of that. Life is about losing sometimes. But you never lose in God that you're not going to gain something better. And God's got something better for you. And tonight you say, God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. I came to this king meeting not just to be here. I came here to participate. I came here to praise you. I came here to lift you up. I'm going to speak the language of the spirit. Out of with depression. Out with a negative thought. Out in the name of Jesus. I don't think I'm ever going to be healed. Well, if, you think, if you're thinking and talking like that, you will never be healed. But if tonight you have a pain, you have cancer in your body, I speak in the name of Jesus. That's the language of faith. I say, oh, is the doctor. What? That's what the doctor said. I'm talking about here is speaking the language of faith. In the name of Jesus, you shall lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. I believe the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I believe we can do it. I believe we can have it. Shivalet. Say shivalet. And they, <laughs> and they say shivalet. And you know what? That day, 42,000 died right there. Right, I mean, the, they were at the verge of going to a new dimension on the spirit of God. A new dimension of blessing and power and anointing of God. They were right there. But just because they could not change these and these, they got stuck and they died right in the spot. I don't want to die in the spot. I thank God for everything. I give him glory. I give him praise for everything. I don't deserve all the things that God has blessed me with. But oh my Jesus, I know you got much more. I know you got much more. I want more revival. I just want to see more souls saved. I want to see the power of God manifested in every, every, every place in our great country and beyond. I want to see it. Hallelujah. I'm hungry for that. I don't know about you. I can't speak for you tonight, but I'm hungry to see a great move of the Spirit of God sweep over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dad was 87 years of age and he was still speaking. Shiva led to say he was dying with cancer and he got out of bed, come to church, and he comes after service and says, You know, I think God's not true with me yet. I think I'm still going to see that church that I always dream to have. I know we're going to have here in the Bay Area a church, an apostolic church, Jesus' name, baptized, Holy Ghost, filled, holiness, believers, 10, 20, 000. he always talked about it like that. And he's an old man, 87 years old, dying with cancer. But if he didn't see it, I want to see it. And I don't know about you, I want to see great things. And it's not only about big numbers. It's, not, 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 it's about souls. It's about reaching souls for the glory and for the kingdom of God. It's not about us, it's about him. It's about lifting the name of Jesus, putting the name up high. Because if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Why don't we lift up the name tonight from the bottom of our heart? He has been so good to all of us. You can stay in the position that you are if you want to. If you want to keep talking the way you've been talking, if you want to be just a, the apostolic Pentecostal believer that comes on Sunday, pays the tithes, and gives, gives an offering, then goes home, don't bother me the rest of the week, you can continue to be so. But I tell you, you are falling short of everything that God has in plan for your life. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to leave my life like that. I want that abundant life. I want the power of God. I want the anointing. I want every everything that the Lord has planned 
and for me. I want to reach my purpose completely. I don't want to die before I reach my purpose, oh God. I want it so bad. I want, if you want it, clap your hands and say, I want it all. If you go to the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew uh, dictionary or, or concordance and you look for the word shivalet, it's going to tell you shivalet means rivers of living water. Shivalet means streams of water, running water. And I read somewhere in the Bible, I don't know, that when we get the spirit of the Lord in us, it's going to be it's going to spring up from the depthness of your soul. Rebirth. Some of you look like a lake here tonight. Some of you look like a swimming pool here tonight. I heard the choir sing before I stepped up here. I, 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 they were singing the sun. I feel rivers, 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 rivers. Can you think? Can you think? Can you picture the Amazon River? Perhaps you've never been at the, at the, at the border of that river. I've been there a few times. Let me tell you something. That river is unstoppable. That's a river. The current takes everything, I mean, that is on its way. It goes into the ocean, into the Atlantic, 200 miles because of the force of that river. It takes every devil, it takes every evil spirit, it takes every sickness, it takes every depression, it takes everything that it can take. That river is so powerful. The Holy Ghost is so powerful. God in us is so powerful. You don't have to suffer with depression anymore. You can get the victory tonight. We got rivers. Rivers of living water flowing in us. It's going to take us farther away. It's going to push us into greater revival. It's going to push us to a life of victory and glory and anointing. Yes, we have problems. Yes, we're going to have problems. Yes, we're going to have afflictions. But the river is more powerful than any affliction, than any adversity, than any problem. Some of you have been dwelling on your problems for too long, thinking on the adversity for too long, always thinking on your failures, always rehearsing past things. Oh, I'm telling you, get out of that mode. Get in the mode of the spirit, the living warriors tonight, the chivalry, the language of God. Oh, and I tell you, that river is going to take all that junk out of you. In the name of Jesus, if you're struggling with porno, por pornography, that river can clean you up tonight. You can live this place completely clean. Some of you are struggling with some things on the flesh, unfaithfulness. Some of you have been talking about this and about that. Some of you have even been talking about the men of God. That river will clean you out tonight. It will wash you up here. Completely pure. He cleans you completely. It's a rivers of the oh, from the innermost being. It's going to flow. Rivers of living water. Say shivalet. And they say shivalet, which means burdens. Which means, ah. Uh, I don't think I can do it. That's what it means. That without the age, means that you cannot go to the other side. It's a language that doesn't speak faith. I mean, one letter changes the whole meaning of it. And sometimes we think, well, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm just doing this little bitty thing. Yeah, that little bitty thing is holding you back tonight from reaching all the things that the Lord has in store for you. God has a blessing on hold because of the way you've been talking, because of the way you've been speaking. One letter, one typo. It's not a typo. You've been doing that consciously. So 
You're either going to go across and be blessed or you're going to stay where you are. So many have died. Because I'll tell you what, what is not moving forward, what is not growing is dying. Now, I don't want to die. I want to keep moving forward. David says, you know, that's a giant, a Goliath. Everybody's scared. Everybody's afraid of him. Uh, but, you know, they, they all were speaking civil it. Civil it. All the people of Israel. I mean, they were hiding. They were saying, oh, we cannot do it. But then he shows, this, shows up this young man, uh, young kid, 17, 18 years of age. I want to go up there. Why? Because I know who am I serving. So they try these, they try that. The brothers try to discourage him. But you know what? He says, listen, I don't need you. I don't, I don't need your armor, uh, King Saul. I'm not accustomed to that. But I got these, this flint. And I got, I know how to use this thing. So before he went to the valley of Elah, he went through Shivalet and picked up five stones. <laughs> he picked up from Shivalet, from the springs of water, those waters, they were running. He stuck the hand, pulled a cloud, fire stones. And he says, I know who my God is. Goliath, you come to me with the sword and the shield, but I come to you. That's, that's the language of the spirit. I don't care how big the giant is. I don't care how big the problem is. I don't care how big the challenge is. My God is bigger than any challenge. My God is bigger than any problem. You come to me with a sword and a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he let the a stone fly and he killed Goliath and tonight you can kill the problem and tonight you can kill the sin all away forever tonight you can get your victory in the name of Jesus I'm about to finish how many believe that I'm about to finish I'm about to finish, but yeah, it's, it's stand, the rain's standing, but th there he comes. There's Joshua. What am I going to do? What are we going to do with this city of Jericho? Wow, those walls are so high, so thick, that people start, you know, he already had a problem. He had experience. Forty years ago, he said, you people, me and Kayla, we were ready to go and take it. Forty, you guys made me waste. That's what civil it does. Make you waste time. There's some of you that should be way up there, but you're still right here. Because instead of saying, yes, let's take him. You start saying, no, we can't. You start murmuring. They to be, they to why, the giants, the this and that. And you know, people believe that evil report more than the faith report. And Joshua says 40 years ago, Caleb and I, we were ready to take the, the land that God promised us. But you people kept us from reaching our goal. So I'm not going to make the same mistake. I don't care how tall those walls look. I don't care how wide they are. We're going to take the city. My God, somebody here, some preacher, some young man, somebody has to leave this place. I'm going to take the city. Somebody and decide, I'm going to take it in Jesus' name. I don't care how big is the problem, how great is the challenge. You ought to stay here and say, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I got to do whatever I have to do. But I'm going to take that challenge and we're going to do it. And Joshua says, so since I have experience in this, this is my instructions. I don't want nobody to say a word. Sip it up. Don't say a word. That was the instructions. He put the musicians, he put the, the priests, he, he organized. And you people, because I know when you guys start marching and you start looking at the wall, and the first day, not even one little crack on the wall, you're going to start complaining, ah, my pastor's crazy. I don't think I'm marching around these walls, that thing is going to come down. Ah, come on. We pray, we fast, we evangelize. He wants us to do this. He wants us to do that. I don't think we're going to reach our city. I don't, that kind of talk, is, that's why we're not reaching our cities. Yeah. 
They told me I cannot raise a church where I am, Brother Haraba. And you know, God blessed us. Yes, we can. And you know, they went, they went seven days and nothing. And the seventh day, they went around seven times. They were about in the sixth time, the seventh day. And nothing had happened. But brothers, you just keep marching. Don't say a word. Don't complain. Just keep marching. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Keep trusting in the Lord. I have faith in his promises. I refuse to open my mouth and speak civil lead. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to murmur. No, if I'm going to open my mouth, it's going to be to praise the Lord. It's going to lift somebody up. I'm going to be... I'm going to be a factor of change. I want to help somebody. I want to reach somebody. I want to touch somebody. I don't care who it is. I want to save somebody. Are you ready to give the shot of victory here tonight? Because this was instruction in the seventh time, the seventh day. Now I'm sipping them. Take the super off. And I want you to shout. I want you to give the best shout that you have ever given. I want you to praise and worship the Lord until you feel all over again those streams of living waters running inside of you. Some of you haven't talked in tongues in who knows how long. Some of you haven't taken a lap here in a long time. Some of you, the max you can do is maybe lift up your hand this way. And if you, if you have some physical problem, I understand. And if you cannot do it really physically, that is fine. But most of you look very healthy. Some of you look extra healthy here. But you haven't done nothing yet. i tell you what, God wants to open up the gate. And let the rivers of living water flow. And everybody here is going to change the way they think and talk. God's going to give you the language of civil land. You're going to start talking faith. You're going to start talking, I can do all things. I want you to go to somebody that has been depressed and down and say, my sister, today is the day. Tonight is the night. My sister, my brother, today is the day. Today is the night. Today the waters are going to hey, let's Open up the gate. Let the rivers of living water flow through this whole sanctuary because this is, this is came in in 2013 in this great district and God's got so much more for every one of us. Hold on one just second. I, I want you, can you guys sing the same song? That, that living. Hey, we're going to do it tonight, all right? Remember Zachariah and Elizabeth? The angel says, Zachariah, you've been in church all of your life. You are priests. You are men with pure heart, but you have not produced one soul in my church. The Bible says that she... She, she was not able to, to bear children. And they were all just like Abraham kind of. But the Lord came and said, you're going to have a child, Zachariah. His name is going to be John. And you know what he said? Because he was so accustomed not to produce anything. He was accustomed to go to church, go to the same routine and just go home. All of a sudden, he said, you're going to have revival, Zachariah. Something is going to happen in your life. And something is going to happen in your ministry. And something is going to happen in your family. And something is going to happen in your business. And something is going to happen in your plans and your education. Oh, I'm about to bless you like you've never been blessed before. I'm about to open up the windows of heaven and pour down blessings more abundantly than you can ask or think. I'm about to heal your body. I'm about to set you free from the problem of depression. I'm about to lose you, Zachariah. You're going to have a child. You're going to have a child. 
I feel like somebody here is going to walk out of this place pregnant with revival, pregnant with new vision, pregnant with new ideas, pregnant with new desire to do better for the kingdom of God. But you know, Zachariah did not learn to speak shibboleth at the beginning. He speaks shibboleth. Me? All? Mm, that's new. It's never happened here in the district of Florida. It's never happened in our city. It's never happened to me. It doesn't matter. It has never happened. It's about to happen tonight. Let's break it in the spirit. Let's do it tonight. Because the Bible says, because you did not believe. I'm going to shut your mouth, Zachariah. I'm going to close your mouth. I, you're not going to speak. But right now, God's going to open up the mouth again. Because I know you will be. So it's got better things for you tonight. Are you ready? Put your hands together. Give God the glory. In the name of Jesus, tonight, oh God. Your glory is already been preached. Your spirit is here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. 